Well, happy new year. It is officially 2023. And uh, here I am as the market turns with Melanie Hunt. I'm gonna bring you your December 2022 market stats for the Metro Atlanta area. Interesting times that we're living in right now. It's kind of a, an extension of what we've been seeing over the last couple of months with the market slowing down dramatically. However, supply is still seeing extremely low. So we're not seeing a major dip in prices because demand is kind of still hovering, but the supply of listings is come down dramatically to match that. So here we go. Total homes for sale last month, we had 15,965. That's up 45% year over year. And then we had only 5,399 listings hit the market last month, in the month of December. That's down 27% year over year. That's probably the lowest number of new listings in a December, maybe since like 2012 or 2013. I'd have to go back and look um, exactly, but it's extremely low, the extremely low number of listings. Pendings, we had 4,088 homes go pending last month. That's down 38% year over year. And then we had 4,903 homes close last month. So that's down 47% over last year. So um, total homes for sale is up, but new listings is down as well as number of closings being down. So supply, we're sitting at 2.1 months of inventory right now. Um, that is actually lower than it was last month. So last month, I think we were at 2.3 or 2.4 months of inventory. Um, and now we're down to 2.1. That has to do with the fact that so many new listings came on the market, but there's still demand absorbing those um, listings that are coming on and going pending. Even in this market where we've got these interest rates that people are terrified of and the news media is scaring everybody, um, it's just, there's still demand. There's still demand out there. Days on market, we are up to 24 days on market. That's up a whopping 167% year over year. So that's up from 19 days on market um, in November, that's the median. And then the average days on market was at 39. Um, that's up 70% year over year. It's up from 33 in November. We generally see an uptick in the days on market in December and January and February, and then they start to go back down again in the spring. Based on the um, uplift of activity that I've seen this week coming into the new year, um, or just after the new year, I feel, I'll tell you guys a little bit in my 2023 predictions, but I feel like we're gonna see a nice little boost here in the spring. List price to sales price ratio. The median list to sales price ratio was at 99.1%, and that's down just nine basis points year over year. Last month it was 99.3, so it's just down two basis points. And then the average is 97.9%, which is down 2.6% year over year. Um, Y'all, that's still a pretty high list to sales price ratio. Um, and, and that really is, has to do with the fact that there's very little inventory and there's still a good amount of demand out there. Price per square foot in the Metro, we're at 176 a square foot. That's up. Um, 5.4% year over year. The average is 189 a square foot. That's up 4.4% year over year. Um, both of those were pretty much flat over last month. So to me, that says we're not seeing dramatic drops in pricing. Um, same thing with the um, median and average sales prices. So the average sales price in the metro Atlanta area is 426.987. That's up 4% year over year. So we've still seen some appreciation year over year in the metro. That's up $3,000 for November. So prices are still staying steady right now. Despite what the news media might be scaring you and saying, here's something really interesting that I wanted to share with you. Shows to pending and shows per listing. I talked about this last month um, a little bit more in depth, 
But what I think is really interesting and important to understand if you're a seller is shows to pending means how many times did the house get shown before it went pending, before it went under contract. That between median and average is between 10 to 15 showings per listing that goes under contract. The average shows per listing, all listings, the ones that are sitting on the market and flailing and not going under contract and the ones that are going under contract, the average is 4.8. So having a marketing plan, you know, working with your agent to understand how am I going to be that listing that gets between 10 to 15 agents through the door in order to get me to go pending? That is where the magic happens to be successful in this market that's slowing down right now to keep you as a seller in the driver's seat. So something to think about there. Um, but if you're selling in 2023, getting a little bit more strategic, gone are the days of crazy, you know, millions of dollars over listing price offers and um, removing all contingencies. And so if you're selling in 2023, in order to be successful, having a very strategic plan in place around how you're going to market it and making sure that the pricing is correct um, and looking at the competition before you go to market is going to be super key in your success as a seller. Boom, bada, bing. That was it. December 2022 as the market turns. Now, let me shift over here and start talking to you guys about my 2023 market predictions. So I've done a lot of market studying. I look at it on the daily. Um, I look at the national and the local news sources to make sure I'm staying up with what's both happening nationally in real estate, but also what is happening locally and hyper locally in the markets that I work so I can advise my clients on what's coming and what maybe the best strategic moves to make are gonna be. Here's my top three predictions. Demand will stay steady. Prices will stay flat. Buyers will be able to negotiate a little bit more. Seller success is going to be a tale of how strategic they can be with their agent, really. I think interest rates are gonna be a lot less volatile than they were last year. We're gonna see them kind of stay in the sixes and potentially be back down into the fives towards the end of the year. As interest rates move lower, that brings more buyers to the table, which then will increase demand on housing. And if we can't get sellers to move from those super low interest rates that they've locked in on the houses that they're currently in um, to be able to do something different, then we're gonna have a hard time unlocking the inventory that's needed to not have prices skyrocket again from the demand. 